Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the hardware inside the TV Plus box from ABS CBN. Now this is actually made by a company called Atlanta DTH who are in China. Um, it's the IT7200 model. It's pretty much used by a lot of different um, companies around the world but they just basically stick your label on it and there you go, it's now your product. And of course they customize the firmware. For example, in this model they've added a buzzer, which I'll talk about more later. Um, and of course they've added the encryption keys for the ABS-CBN exclusive channels. Now if you're careful you can actually open this up without breaking the warranty sticker. So that's pretty useful, just be careful. If you do break this then obviously they're not going to honor your warranty. Now inside, it's actually a little bit interesting. Um, I still believe it's overpriced for what it is, especially when you compare it to international prices, but anyway, that's not what we're here to look at. It has a 500 megahertz CPU, 128 meg of RAM, and 128 meg of flash storage. So specs wise, it's okay. Um, it's actually capable of outputting up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Although I imagine that's probably for over HDMI and not over S video. Now I know what you're thinking, but there is no HDMI port. There's only S-Video, audio out, power, and antenna in. Well, if you look here, let me zoom in. Now this here is actually an unpopulated HDMI connector. Um, now I don't know whether you could solder one on and then start using it. When I followed the traces, it seems to go straight back to the main CPU. So I'm thinking maybe you could actually solder a HDMI connector on there. Um, but I don't know, it might be disabled in the CPU, so it's hard to say. If you're wondering what this one here is, That's actually for an Ethernet connector, so you can connect this to your network. Now, around that, if you follow the traces, there are a bunch of unpopulated um, items. So, I'm almost certain that if even if you did put an Ethernet connector there, you wouldn't get it working. But the HDMI, maybe. Now, it has support for a seven-day EPG, but of course, there's only um, ABS-CBN channels that are making use of that at the moment, but hopefully we'll see more channels make use of that in the future. Um, it does have uh, encryption support built in, so they call it conditional access, um, but basically it's just to watch encrypted channels, as I already mentioned. Now, let's have a close look at this buzzer. Now, ordinarily, this buzzer doesn't really do anything, but you may have noticed that they have this emergency warning system that ABS, CBN are promoting, where if they want, they can send out an emergency signal and everyone's um, TV boxes here will actually display an alert on the screen and this buzzer will start going. So even if you have your TV muted or something like that, this buzzer is gonna start going crazy. And I think that's actually a custom mod that they got added on. Now, although this USB port doesn't have any support for playing back movies, and I've not seen it any on any rebranded models, the chip does support MPEG-2, MPEG-4, H.264, um, and so on decoding. So although it might not be super powered, it can do decoding. So I don't know if maybe one day they could do some kind of software upgrade that lets you play external files, but to be honest, I don't see it coming. So I've now got a channel playing and you can see it's consuming around 5.8 to 5.9 watts. So it's okay, it's pretty reasonable. Let's try put it in standby and see how much power it consumes. Okay, it's dropping. Okay, that's, st that's still pretty high, 5 watts. I would have expected it to be much lower than that. I'm going to leave this for, I don't know, say five minutes and then see if this drops. Um, maybe it takes a while before it goes into a deeper sleep. Well, I left it for a while and nothing seems to have changed. It's still consuming around five watts on standby. So that's kind of poor. Let's turn it back on. Okay, it's opening the channel. There it is, it's playing. And now we're at 5.8, 5.9 watts. So this thing is basically just wasting power when it's on standby. Um, that's kind of annoying. Now after probing this with my multimeter, I was able to determine that we can get a serial output through these pins here. I still need to play around with it a bit. I haven't really got much out of it, but I got something so I'd like to show you. Um, if I zoom in on these pins, I'm not exactly sure the configuration here. I know that the second pin, this one here, 
that I'm blocking, that one is the ground. And I know that the fourth pin on the end here, that one is our TX, but I don't know if the third pin is our RX or the first pin, um, because I haven't been able to get the unit to respond when I send it data. Anyway, let's connect our cables. Okay, so although this might look a bit complicated, it's actually pretty simple. I've just made a kind of hacked a few wires together to connect my Arduino to the um, UART of this TV Plus box. On the screen, we're gonna see any console output from the box. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And you can see here, it sent boot and then underscore okay, and the box has started to boot. Now, I've tried sending commands, I've tried to interrupt it with escape, I've tried a few different things, um, and no matter what, I can't seem to get anything more out of it other than boot OK. Now, it's possible they've locked it so I can't actually send any data to it. Um, it's possible. Let's turn it off and turn it on. And you see again, it sent boot, okay, and then it continues to boot. Um, I've tried everything that I could think of. I tried different combinations of holding down buttons. I tried doing the USB upgrade to see if maybe that would give me a console. Um, I haven't really had any luck. I mean, I'm happy that I managed to get anything out of it, but it seems like we could do more with this. For anyone curious as to why I'm doing this, um, I'm not trying to hack it or anything bad like that. I'm just trying to see if I can get connected, get a console on it. Who knows, like to see what operating system it's running, just play with it basically. Um, I'm pretty sure that everything that you'd need to like hack this, for instance, taking the encryption keys and so on would be very secure. You wouldn't be able to get those and I have no interest in those. I just want to play with the, with the built-in operating system, whether it's BusyBox or Linux or whatever. Now you can see right now it's consuming 6.2 watts. Haven't changed anything, it's just playing a channel as normal. It does seem to vary a little bit. Um, and this thing does get hot. Like that can there is very hot. Heat sink here, it's pretty warm. And it's only been running for a few minutes. This thing, you know, it gets very hot. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any ideas of what we can do to play with this, let me know. I am very curious to see if you connect a HDMI connector here and then plug it into your TV, whether or not it would work. You know, when you follow the traces, it seems like they're going straight back into the CPU. So it's not like the network one where you've got missing components. I think it really could work. It'd be interesting to see. Thanks and goodbye.